In the heart of the dense, untamed wilderness of Ravenwood Forest lies an area shrouded in darkness and mystery. Locals whisper about a sinister legend, one that has been passed down through generations, known as the Phantom of Ravenwood. Skeptics dismiss it as mere folklore, but those who have dared to venture deep into the forest have encountered something far more terrifying than they could have imagined. It was a crisp autumn evening when I decided to explore Ravenwood Forest. The leaves had turned a fiery orange and red, casting an eerie glow in the fading light. As a journalist with a penchant for the paranormal, I was drawn to the tales of the Phantom, a ghostly figure said to haunt the forest, luring unsuspecting travelers to their doom. Equipped with my camera and voice recorder, I set out to uncover the truth behind the legend. The entrance to Ravenwood was marked by an old weathered sign, barely visible through the thick underbrush. As I stepped onto the overgrown path, a chill ran down my spine. The forest was unnaturally silent, as if the creatures of the woods were holding their breath. I walked deeper into the forest, the only sounds being the crunch of leaves underfoot and the occasional rustle of the wind through the trees. About an hour into my trek, I came across a small abandoned campsite. The remnants of a fire pit and tattered tents suggested that someone had left in a hurry. I felt a surge of excitement mixed with apprehension. This could be a clue to the Phantom's existence. As I examined the site, I noticed a series of strange symbols carved into a nearby tree. They looked ancient, almost ritualistic, and sent a wave of unease through me. I decided to set up my own camp a short distance away planning to stay overnight to maximize my chances of encountering the Phantom. As darkness fell, the forest seemed to come alive with shadows that danced and flickered in the firelight. I could feel an oppressive presence, as if unseen eyes were watching my every move. Ignoring the rising fear, I turned on my voice recorder and began to document my findings. Around midnight, the temperature plummeted, and a thick fog rolled in enveloping the forest in an impenetrable shroud. My fire sputtered and died, plunging me into darkness. Just as I was about to relight it, I heard a faint mournful wail echoing through the trees. My heart raced as the wail grew louder, more distinct. It was a voice filled with sorrow and anguish, and it seemed to be coming closer. Grabbing my flashlight, I scanned the surrounding woods. The beam cut through the fog revealing glimpses of twisted branches and looming shadows. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw it. A pale, translucent figure drifting silently among the trees. It was a woman, dressed in tattered, old-fashioned clothes, her hair billowing around her as if caught in an invisible breeze. Her eyes were hollow and lifeless, yet they seemed to bore into my soul. Who are you? I called out, my voice trembling. The phantom paused, her gaze fixed on me. Leave this place, she whispered, her voice echoing with an otherworldly resonance. You do not belong here. Summoning my courage, I stepped closer. Why are you here? What happened to you? She pointed to the tree with the carved symbols. Bound by those who sought to harness dark powers. Trapped in an endless torment. The air grew colder, and I could see my breath forming clouds. The phantom began to weep, her cries a haunting melody that filled the night. Suddenly, the ground beneath me trembled, and a cacophony of voices rose from the forest floor, whispering in an incomprehensible language. Panic surged through me, and I knew I had to leave. I turned and ran, the voices growing louder, more insistent. The forest seemed to close in around me, the path twisting and turning in ways I couldn't understand. Just as I felt I would be lost forever, I burst through the tree line and into the safety of the open field beyond. Gasping for breath, I looked back to see the fog retreating, the whispers fading into the distance. 
I never returned to Ravenwood Forest, but the memory of that night haunts me still. I listen to the recording often, the ghostly wail of the phantom, a chilling reminder of the encounter. The symbols, the voices, the phantom, they were all too real. The legend of Ravenwood is no mere story, it's a dire warning. To those who seek adventure in the unknown, heed my tale. There are forces in this world that defy explanation, ancient and malevolent. Some mysteries are better left unsolved, and some legends should remain in the shadows. Ravenwood Forest is one such place, where the boundary between the living and the dead is thin, and the spirits of the past still walk among us. Nestled on the outskirts of the small town of Willow Creek, lies the decaying structure of the Ravenwood Asylum. Abandoned for over 50 years, this old mental institution is the center of a chilling urban legend that has haunted the townspeople for generations. They say the tormented souls of former patients still wander the halls, trapped in an endless nightmare. It was a cold October night when I decided to investigate the Ravenwood Asylum. As a journalist with a fascination for the paranormal, I was determined to uncover the truth behind the ghost stories and eerie sightings. Armed with a flashlight and my trusty recorder, I ventured towards the dilapidated building. The main entrance was boarded up, but I found a broken window around the back and climbed inside. As soon as I set foot within the asylum, an overwhelming sense of dread washed over me as if the building itself had come alive to greet me with a sinister embrace. The corridors were thick with dust, and the stench of mold and decay filled the air. I switched on my flashlight and began to explore, each step echoing through the empty halls. The walls were covered in unsettling graffiti and desperate messages scratched into the paint by the patients long ago. Save me. They're watching and never leave were scrawled in various places, sending shivers down my spine. I made my way to the central wing, where I had heard the most paranormal activity was reported. As I walked, the temperature seemed to drop further, and the beam of my flashlight flickered. The silence was oppressive, broken only by the occasional drip of water from the ceiling. Suddenly I heard a faint whispering sound, like a chorus of voices murmuring just out of earshot. Is anyone there? I called out, my voice trembling. There was no response, only the persistent whispering growing louder. I followed the sound to a door at the end of the hall. The plaque read, Ward C, Isolation. The door creaked open, revealing a room that looked untouched by time. Rusted bed frames and decaying mattresses lined the walls, and in the center of the room stood a single ominous wheelchair. I approached cautiously, the whispering now a frantic chatter. My recorder crackled to life on its own, capturing the ghostly sounds that seemed to emanate from the very walls. As I examined the wheelchair, it suddenly moved, as if pushed by an invisible force. I stumbled back, my heart pounding in my chest. The whispering turned into anguished wails, filling the room with an unbearable noise. I turned to leave, but the door slammed shut, trapping me inside. Panic set in as I pounded on the door, desperate to escape. The room grew colder still, and I could see my breath in the air. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a figure standing in the shadows, a man in a tattered hospital gown his eyes hollow and lifeless. Help me, he whispered, his voice a tortured echo. They won't let me leave. I froze, unable to move or speak. The figure stepped closer, his hand reaching out towards me. I felt an icy grip on my arm and a wave of sorrow and pain washed over me. In a flash, I saw visions of the asylum's dark past patients subjected to cruel treatments, their cries for mercy ignored. The images were overwhelming, a torrent of suffering and despair. 
With all my strength, I yanked my arm free and bolted for the door. It flew open as if by some unseen force, and I raced down the hall, the wails of the tormented souls echoing behind me. I didn't stop running until I was outside, gasping for breath in the cold night air. To this day I can't explain what happened in the Ravenwood Asylum. My recorder captured the whispers and cries, but the images I saw remain etched in my mind. I never went back, and I warn anyone who dares to explore the asylum. Some places are haunted not by ghosts, but by the echoes of human suffering. The legend of the Ravenwood Asylum is no mere story. It's a grim reminder of the darkness that can reside in the human soul and the lingering pain of those who were forgotten. If you ever find yourself near Willow Creek, steer clear of the asylum. Some doors once opened can never be closed. In the quiet, unassuming town of Ashton Falls, there is a legend that sends shivers down the spines of those who dare to speak of it. They call him the Mirror Man, a sinister figure said to appear in reflections and haunt anyone who looks into a mirror at the stroke of midnight. The tales vary, but they all end the same, with the disappearance of the victim, never to be seen again. Intrigued by the stories, I decided to delve into the mystery of the Mirror Man. As a writer specializing in urban legends, I had investigated countless eerie tales, but this one felt different. There was something deeply unsettling about the accounts I had heard, and I wanted to know more. Armed with a notebook, a camera, and a healthy dose of skepticism, I set out to interview the townspeople and gather as much information as I could. My first stop was the local library, where I met Mrs. Hawthorne, the elderly librarian who had lived in Ashton Falls her entire life. She was more than willing to share her knowledge of the legend. They say he was once a man obsessed with his own reflection, she began, her voice low and cautious. He would spend hours gazing into mirrors admiring himself. One night he vanished without a trace and since then, anyone who looks into a mirror at midnight risks summoning his spirit. The next person I spoke to was Tom, the town's handyman. He recounted a chilling encounter from his youth. I was 16 and a group of us dared each other to try and summon the mirror man, he said, his eyes darting around nervously. We stood in front of the bathroom mirror, waiting for midnight. At the stroke of 12, the temperature dropped and the mirror fogged up. Then we saw him, a shadowy figure with hollow eyes staring back at us. We ran out of there so fast, I don't think my feet touched the ground. Determined to experience this phenomenon for myself, I decided to spend the night in the old, abandoned house on the outskirts of town, rumored to be the Mirror Man's former residence. The house was a decrepit structure, its windows boarded up and its walls covered in graffiti. Inside the air was thick with dust and the scent of mildew. I found a large cracked mirror in the master bedroom, perfect for my experiment. As midnight approached, I set up my camera to record the event and stood in front of the mirror, my heart pounding with a mix of fear and anticipation. The clock struck twelve, and I stared intently at my reflection. For a moment, nothing happened. Then the air grew cold, and a faint whisper filled the room. The surface of the mirror began to ripple, like water disturbed by a pebble. Suddenly, my reflection vanished, replaced by the image of a gaunt, shadowy figure with empty eyes. The Mirror Man. He seemed to be watching me, his gaze piercing and unnerving. I wanted to run, but I was frozen in place, compelled to keep looking. Why have you come here? A voice echoed in my mind, though the mirror man's lips did not move. I wanted to know if the legend was true. I replied, my voice trembling. Now you know, he whispered, but knowledge comes at a price. Before I could react, 
The figure reached out from the mirror, his hand cold as ice as it grasped my wrist. I tried to pull away, but his grip was unyielding. The room around me began to fade, replaced by a dark, endless void. Panic surged through me as I realized I was being pulled into the mirror. With a final desperate effort, I broke free and stumbled backward, falling to the floor. The mirror shattered into a thousand pieces, each shard reflecting a fragment of the mirror man's sinister visage. The room returned to normal, and the oppressive cold lifted, but the sense of dread lingered. I gathered my equipment and fled the house, vowing never to return. Reviewing the footage later, I saw nothing unusual. No shadowy figure, no rippling mirror, only my terrified face staring back at the camera. The experience left me shaken, and I couldn't shake the feeling that the mirror man was still watching me, waiting for another chance to drag me into his world. The legend of the mirror man is more than just a story. It's a warning to those who are tempted to gaze too deeply into the unknown. If you find yourself in Ashton Falls, heed this advice. Avoid mirrors at midnight. Some reflections are better left unseen and some legends are all too real.